What's up everybody, I'm Alex and in this video we're going to talk about the OnePlus 9 Pro. OnePlus was a company that was uh, pretty well dealing with all the flagships out there in the market and uh, they were called the flagship killer. But what happened here is that uh, OnePlus actually became the real flagship. Here is their newest phone, OnePlus 9 Pro, and I have been using it since the day of the premiere. This video is not sponsored by any term and OnePlus don't have the opportunity to see the video before I post it. First of all, the whole design of the OnePlus 9 Pro is very cool looking. I like the color scheme here as I have the morning mist color, but I have to say that I'm missing the matte colors. I like the matte blue color that was on the OnePlus 8 Pro and I want to see matte colors here also. The thing that I like here is that you have a really nice gradient from the top to the bottom of the phone but the thing is that the whole phone is glossy and if you don't know the glossy finish is a fingerprint magnet and you have to clean it frequently if you are not using a case. The other part of the design is the camera system that is positioned on the back of the phone and uh, I have to say that I like it because it is the same color as the whole phone and it's not differing by any term. Also there is no such thing as a huge camera bump on the back so this is a thumbs up for me because I really don't like huge camera bumps at the back. The whole front of the phone is a screen. It is a 6.7 inch fluid AMOLED screen with a refresh rate of 120Hz. It also features the LTPO technology which can change the refresh rate from 1 to 120Hz depending on the app you are using and depending on the drainage of the battery that uh, this app is doing. You have a resolution of 1440p and the pixel density is 525 ppi. I like the screen very much. I like how good the colors are. I like how vibrant and vivid are Day, and I like the thing that you can change the color scheme from the settings. You have settings for sRGB, you have settings for AMOLED and you also have settings for P3 calibration. The colors are so good that uh, I really enjoyed watching video content on the phone and the other thing is that the screen is incredibly bright. Even under a harsh sunlight you can actually rely on the phone because the maximum brightness is 1300 nits which is crazy. I have to say that a refresh rate of 120Hz at least is uh, something that you have to search in a phone because this thing really adds up to the whole experience using the phone, adds up to the smoothness of the experience while you're working, while you're gaming or while you're watching videos. While I'm talking about the screen, I also like to talk about the speakers of the phone because the speakers are something that uh, emphasizes the whole experience of watching videos on the phone because as you're watching, you're also listening if you're not with headphones. Here you have a pair of stereo speakers that are really loud. The one at the top is front facing and the other one is bottom facing. The one that is bottom facing can be easily covered with your finger but uh, I have to say that these speakers are so loud that it won't actually matter that much. The sound quality is really nice, the audio experience is really good, I like how crisp the audio is, I like that there is also some kind of bass which is not that big of a deal but it's actually there. The thing that I don't like here is that it doesn't stand up that much to the other competitors with the stereo speakers. For example, the iPhone 12 and the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra annihilates the speakers of this phone but this is part of the game. And the main specs of the phone, Snapdragon 888, the new beast from Qualcomm, 8GB or 12GB of LPDDR4 memory depending on which version you are buying and 256GB of UFS 3.1 storage. The storage is insanely fast for all your things that you are going to do on the phone, it's not going to bottleneck you anyhow. The great optimization between the software and the hardware is very good and I have to say that I cannot complain about the productivity of the phone and about the power. You can multitask with this phone with no issues at all. Also so you can game. I'm playing Call of Duty, I'm playing also Mortal Kombat and I have never experienced uh, some glitches, some stutter or anything like this in the game. The game booster of this phone does the job very well of optimizing the hardware to the games that you are playing. So I have to say that overall the productivity and the power of the phone is really 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 good and it is a real flagship now. The software is one of the strongest points of OnePlus and this is the ace in their sleeve if I can say it so. The phone comes with pre-installed Android 11 and it comes with Oxygen OS 11. The thing here is that we see a little bit of a difference between the previous versions of Oxygen and this version of Oxygen because here you can notice that it starts to look a little bit like One UI from Samsung. This is one of the things that I don't like and this is one of the things that I uh, actually skip Samsung because I don't like 
the One UI interface. The thing is that uh, OnePlus still tries to stick to the stock Android, but the experience is changing a little bit with all these interface changes. The guys from OnePlus are really good at optimizing the software to the hardware and here they made a great thing also. The Snapdragon 888 is very well optimized to the software and I have to say that all the experience that I had since the day of the premiere till now is almost flawless. I had um, almost no issues and all the issues that I have are some minor things that are going to be changed with the software update. As here you have the Oxygen OS, you also have many things to customize. You have many widgets that you can add to your phone screen and uh, also you have many settings. You have many things that you can do there and the other things that are little tweaks but are also nice is to change the animation of the fingerprint and uh, things like this. These are minor software tweaks but uh, I prefer to have them instead of not having them at all. And as I'm talking about the fingerprint and the security of the phone, I have to say that it works really well. The face recognition is also good and the fingerprint is flawless. But my issue with the fingerprint is why is it down there? It is so down there on the phone that sometimes it's not convenient to use it at all. And uh, this is maybe my only complaint about the fingerprint. Also, it is an optical fingerprint. It's not an ultrasonic, so don't expect miracles. And now it's time to talk about the most uh, marketed part of OnePlus 9 series, the cameras. Here, as you may know, OnePlus is in collaboration with Hasselblad and they actually help them to tune their cameras a little bit better than the 8 Pro that uh, I'm also using. And I have to say that they did a good job here. Good job, but not great. You have a brand new sensor, the Sony IMX789, which is a huge sensor. Also, it is a 48 megapixel and the aperture is 1.8. You have a 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor, which is even bigger. And I have to say that this is my favorite sensor for now. 8 megapixel telephoto sensor that I'm not using that frequently because I don't like few things about it. Front camera is not okay at all for this price. I don't like it, even that it's 16 megapixel and it is f2.4. I don't like how the image just look there is lack of detail and not to mention that the phone is 1069 US dollars so this front camera is nonsense for me here you can see some photo samples that I have taken and I have to say there is a really nice performance boost compared to the 8 Pro. Here we can see that the dynamic range of the camera is really good but it is quite normal because the newer sensors are way bigger and they can capture a bit more light. I really like using ultra wide cameras of all the phones because uh, of the creativity that you can put uh, in the photography with it and I have to say that I'm pretty happy with the thing here. The 8 megapixel telephoto sensor is okay-ish but it's not something special. It's not something that maybe most of you are going to use. The video capabilities of the OnePlus 9 Pro are really good because you can shoot in 8K 30, 4K 30, 60 and 120. 8K 30 is a little bit overkill for me because most of us don't even have a 4K screen, not to mention an 8K screen. And the only thing that I can see here we're doing is downscaling the 8K into 4K or doing some crop things while you're shooting a video. But uh, doing crop things uh, of a video shot with a phone is not something that I'm a fan of. So this is a video sample from the main sensor of the OnePlus 9 Pro. Keeping in mind that this is their first phone that is a little bit more focused for photography and videography than the other phones. And I have to say that I pretty much like the detail that I have here. I also like how everything looks, I like the colors here. And uh, we can totally see a difference between the 8 Pro and the 9 Pro. So this is a big thumbs up, but of course we have a new sensor. Now we're going to switch to the ultra-wide sensor to see how it goes there. As I mentioned, the ultra-wide sensor is maybe my favorite sensor of this phone because I really like using this kind of stuff. I really like using it for photography and videography. And I have to say that I'm happy with the results here. The dynamic range is good. The autofocus is very good here because uh, there was a moment that I compared this phone to the the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and this phone annihilate the autofocus of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. So this thing is very nice with focusing. Uh, I don't think that you are going to have any issues with the focus. I have been testing it in many different conditions and the conclusion that I can make is that for video this phone is really nice. Both two videos were shot in 4K 30 and I have to say that I'm not using 8K because almost none of us having a 8K monitor and uh, almost none of us is going to use the full potential of the 8K. The front camera for video is not okay because it's only 1080p at 30 fps which is insane you have a phone again for 1069 us dollars 
Then you have a 1080p front camera, which I really don't understand. And I really hope that OnePlus are going to make a software update to change this thing. Overall, the quality of the camera is getting better and better with OnePlus because they were not very well known with the quality of the cameras. Here we have significantly better colors than the 8 Pro. We also have an improved portrait mode, even compared with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Last but not least is the battery and uh, my experience with it. I have to say that I'm uh, okay-ish with the battery because uh, it's not one of the best on the market right now, it's not one of the biggest also, but there are a few things that are really good. As you can see from this footage here, I have 50% left of the battery, the phone has been off the charger for 22 hours and the screen on time is 5 hours. It's not something great, it's not something extraordinary, but it is okay. The thing here is that you can almost instantly charge the phone because you have a 65 watt charger in the package. You, you have a charger, you have a charger in the package. And the other thing is that this phone now supports a 50 watt wireless charging, which is absolutely great. So for example, if you are plugging in the phone into the 65 watt charger, you can go make a coffee, come back, drink the coffee, and you have plenty of battery to finish the day maybe. Of course, this depends on the work you are doing. I expected a little bit more life from this thing, but yeah, that's life. The rate that I can give of this phone is maybe 9 out of 10. And I'm cutting points because of the front-facing camera. That is absolutely not okay. And the other thing is that uh, the whole marketing thing with Hasselblad and uh, the improvement that we are seeing here is not that big of a deal as they made it look like. So guys, thank you for watching this video. If you like it, if you find it useful, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more great videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.